Hello, next on today's agenda, there is a bit of an information leak. Uh, a Tesla employee leaked some information on some upcoming autopilot features, functionality, and other changes with the vehicle. Um, this was publicly posted uh, by the person who received the information, and I did get permission just to uh, reiterate that since not everybody client clock climbs through every forum, crawls around, you know, looking for any bit of information. Uh, now there is a lot of information, but I'm just going to cover the main highlights, or in this case, uh, I used crayon. Less messy. Uh, this person that received the information, uh, as they put it, had an interesting and exciting exchange with Tesla employee today while traveling at a supercharger in California. They had about a 30 minute conversation. Uh, and just to start breaking it down, uh, this person was high level with Tesla and uh, works relatively closely with Elon. Now the consensus is autopilot is very close to ready. and. Uh, For the most part, um, let's see, well, you know what, I, there's so many highlight points, I'm just going to go in order of the highlight points, it's going to be a little too hard to try and group certain things together. So first, autopilot is close to ready. Next, the system may talk to the mothership, or in other words, Tesla HQ, so it knows areas where autopilot can't be relied upon, such as uh, specific roads where the lines are considerably overfaded, where the uh, system can't reliably determine lanes. Um, that's So far that is the only recall to home that's been stated. Uh, it will give driver notice in advance that you're approaching an area where autopilot cannot function reliable, reliably. Um, it was asked if the car tells Tesla when a speed sign is ignored by the driver and apparently no such communication will happen. Uh, in stop and go traffic, the system is reliable enough the driver could be distracted while driving and still be safe, such as uh, browsing the center console, taking a slight little snooze, reading a book. Not that we condone any of these things, and we absolutely do not condone any of these things. I've already gotten very roasted over the uh, browsing the center screen, even though I was paying considerable attention to the road. There appears to be a debate within Tesla over how much the car should pester the driver to stay focused on driving. Uh, uh, the individual leaking the information really disliked over pestering the driver. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with uh, cars making you press that, uh, the, uh, what I call the lawyer button, uh, on the GPS screen saying, you know, don't use your GPS while driving, Just pull over and set your destination for that kind of pestering so on and so forth. Uh, now, the per um, it was brought up about Elon mentioning sensor suite number two. The person who gave the information said that and confirmed more sensors are needed for autonomous driving, which was not a surprise. Uh, Elon didn't mention autonomous driving per se. He mentioned autopilot or assisted driving. So what's coming out right now, the sensor suites are not capable of... Daddy, yes, Gino? I want clothes on. You want clothes on? Where are your clothes? Okay, go on. I'll be in in two minutes. Close the door. You're letting the cold air outside. No, I don't feel it. Okay. Uh, so more sensors will be needed for fully autonomous driving, although there will be limited functionality on private property, such as automatic parking, um, so on and so forth, pulling itself into the garage. Gene, close the door. You're letting all the cold air out of the house. No, I open. No, close. Now there was a uh, discussion about laws and about potential creation of new laws. Uh, basically, Tesla wants to go so overboard on safety 
um, and prevention features that new laws will not need to be created, at least not pertaining to the Model S. Now, it doesn't say that potentially other manufacturers uh, might have less advanced systems, but Tesla wants to be so focused on safety that new laws will not need to be created, or otherwise kind of the common sense thing. We don't need a law on something because common sense is so actually common for a change, you know, kind of along those lines. Uh, the benchmark they want to meet and surpass is the Mercedes S-Class. And uh, there was confidence implied that they had already beat the S-Class in lane keeping. Uh, there was no discussion about self-parking, but when the information leaker pulled up, um, I will quote um, what was said uh, in the quote. I mean, this person got out of the car and it parked itself next to the supercharger, but I wasn't about to point out that we all saw that. End quote. What, Jean? I found salamis. Oh, you found salamis? Yes. Okay, go eat your salamis. So, uh, basically the car did park itself next to the supercharger. It's a great start. This person also mentioned it was much more relaxing driving in autopilot mode. Something said to the effect of, if you're tired, you still are able to monitor the car just fine, whereas you might not be able to drive the car safely with autopilot off. Um, autopilot would have been awesome on the road trip we just got back on. We just got back from South Carolina. Of course, as usual, I drove straight through each way. And towards the end, uh, I was getting a little snoozy. Didn't want to, you know, maybe drifting a bit. I did pull off the freeway and took about an hour nap while we were supercharging. And uh, that lane keeping would have been nice. I would have been just fine monitoring the car, but uh, uh, in terms of actively trying to pay attention to everything, um, it was starting to become a bit of a stretch. Thus is why I took a nap, and then I was refreshed enough to make it home, no problem. Uh, the person did get to see firmware version 7. Uh, was not allowed to take pictures. Just some points. Uh, the dark flat look that was in the demo cars at the D-Launch were less cartoony or excuse me, we're at the D launch, so it's it's going to take the uh, style look that was if you were at the uh, the Model D launch, you saw uh, the uh, at least a, a, a rough version of the version seven firmware look. Icons were less cartoony. Uh, There's less contrast between the background and the text and icons, but the sun was shining brightly on the screen and even the individual that was driving the uh, test car had trouble making out the bottom row of buttons. Um, could just be the sun shining, can't comment too much on that. The layout exactly mimics what we have, so everything's in the same place on the 17 inch screen. There's a new icon indicating that with the charge port is open. So no one needing to look on the charge screen or in the controls menu. It was implied there were not any big new features, so that means no apps icon, uh, and s still the same two open windows layout. The team spent considerable effort spending, speeding up response times, but are limited by the hardware. So it's somewhat of a hardware limitation of any of the legginess on the screen, but they were able to speed up somewhat. Uh, this person never uses the web browser, so they couldn't comment uh, if it was much of a much faster. Although when they launched the web browser, it was set to go to YouTube.com, which is ironic since the car cannot play yet video. Potentially, they're going to allow us to, um, you know, while we're sitting in park charging, which is legal, using it while in motion is not legal. Um, panning in nav screen seemed smoother and quicker. Uh, did joke about there being a bunch of little features that likely were added and the person indicated indeed there are. One such feature that the uh, information leaker never noticed was uh, 
of there is a new lock icon at the very top left of the screen. It appeared to indicate the doors are locked or not. The instrument cluster as follows. Same dark flat approach, energy graph, and nav were on screen. As much as I said flat, these two were rounded in the sense of round dials. The energy graph is no longer the rectangular design. Version 7 user interface overhaul is very close again, except for the rounded energy graph. It was mentioned the center area got a large redesign. Uh, the center area is going to show the car's position in relation to the lane markings, which is a neat idea. It is somewhere also will also indicate the position and distance of cars, objects around you. Very dynamic where the words were that were used. It was mentioned if you got too close to an object beside you, the car would move you away. I interpreted that as it means it will prevent, reduce impact of side swiping. Apparently does work close with Elon. Elon is apparently is a very demanding but a but a good guy, and of course no surprise there. Ludicrous mode did come up. After doing several launches, they felt sick. And this was not the case with insane launches. So it sounds like Ludicrous really is as ludicrous as it sounds. Not quite plaid. If Ludicrous made you sick, I'm sure plaid going plaid will turn your insides out. Uh, in their opinion, it's not worth the 5000 It would cost an upgrade on a P85D. But then again, if you have the disposable income to buy a P85D to begin with, go for it. That was my interpretation, but the uh, not worth the cost was there. It was stated at the time the car's ride height... It was stated that at the time the car's ride height was super lower basically scraping the pavement. That was original when they first came out. Similar or lower than Ferrari Lamborghinis. Now, the ride height even on low is still a bit higher than it was originally. Uh, an unlucky slash lucky driver ran over something after getting the titanium shield installed. Tesla service brought the car in. The shield did exactly what it was supposed to do and there was no damage to the battery pack. The titanium shield did, however, need replacement and could need replacement if used, depending on what you hit. If you run over something that it has to crush, it was made to be very quick and easy to replace. This person mentioned that the two instances that resulted in fire, and in parentheses, and, let no ti and had no titanium shield, if there was, in parentheses, if there wasn't a battery pack under the car, i.e. gas car, and everything else was equal, the object would have went through into the passenger compartment and possibly causing injury or accident. Surprise! Tesla let a skeleton out of the closet, so to speak. And um, this person saw this while at the factory tour. The bones of this skeleton were also visible at times through the tour, if you made a point to look for them. The X and the 3 were mentioned numerous times on the tour, although not much was said about the Model 3. Current production levels are at 200 cars a day, 1,000 a week, is what they were told. And I'm going to wrap this up, because this is, like I said, I could go on, I could go on for almost an hour getting into more details, but this is just a taste of what's to come. And I'm sure within the next coming weeks, we'll get a lot more information. Uh, so just to reiterate, Autopilot should be available very soon. Uh, so very soon, I would say in Tesla time, within the next three months. Uh, and just to reiterate again, new hardware would be needed for full autonomous driving, matching what Elon already stated. For the autopilot, as initially promised, no new hardware needed. No, I didn't ask about a retrofit. This individual was not part of that program at this time, so I didn't feel questions about next-gen autopilot were appropriate.
And I think we will conclude with that. If any more tidbits of information come out, I will be sure to pass those along to you.